<laughs> oh, yeah. Other than having a ridiculously catchy tune that will pop into your head at the most inconvenient times, Attack on Titan is known, of course, for its amazing and often eerie titans. With a history spanning 2,000 years in the anime, titans have come in all shapes and sizes, and while there is some overlap in regards to powers and traits, there are some major differences between the titan forms. That's why in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into what makes these titans tick. Let's start off with the run-of-the-mill plain Janes of the titan world, the pure titans. The pure titans, which are also referred to as Muku no Kyojin, often grow up to 2 to 15 meters in height and are the titans that look the most similar to a typical human. Although, admittedly, a much bigger and much creepier typical human. A majority of these titans we see in both the anime and the manga are the pure titans and are basically pretty common. These titans seemingly have the inability to form and process thought and go on reflexes and natural instinct, often charging after humans at first sight. While they might not be the strongest titan in this video, they are certainly a force to be reckoned with due to their height and physical strength, and also down to the fact that they often attack in numbers. They've also often been used as a key weapon in war ever since they came into existence, with the first being used in this way by Eldia. Although they do have one noticeable weakness, and that is the fact that they can be taken down by a quick slash to the nape of the neck with the typical two-sword attack that is synonymous with the show. The next titan on this list is the Abnormal Titan, which, as you can tell by the name, isn't all that normal. Although in appearance and physicality they are the same as the pure titans, they often exhibit bizarre and erratic behavior and also show some levels of intelligence. In fact, instead of just chasing after random humans, they often tend to ignore them and instead attack more strategic locations that will cause more lasting damage. They are also much more adept at running, jumping, and speed walking than the pure titans and have even sometimes communicated in human tongues. Their ability to speak was chronicled by Ilsa Langnar when a titan became hesitant during an expedition massacre and even addressed her as Lady Ymir. Although this didn't exactly end well, it did force humans to look at the titans with a whole new perspective. But those familiar with Ymir will also know that the next nine on this list are separate from these previous two titans. That's because, after absorbing fragments of Ymir, the Nine Titans are nine different Titan power groups that have been handed down by the Eldians for almost 2,000 years. Each of them have their own distinct name and abilities, and all that transform into them do so at will. This means they retain their human intelligence, and often the Titan form adapts to its user. Users also have access to abilities that can include regeneration of certain body parts and advanced healing. They also come in various shapes and sizes, with some spanning over 60 meters tall, while others measure at just 4 meters tall. So who or what are the Nine Titans, then? Well, let's go through them. Of course, we can't talk about Titans without mentioning the big man himself, the Colossal Titan. The poster boy for the anime, the Colossal Titan is known for its enormous size, standing at around 60 meters, its physical prowess, and the ability to kick in an outer gate as if it were nothing. Users of the Colossal Titan are also able to control the energy they produce during transformation in various ways, such as triggering a powerful wind blast. The Colossal Titan can also control the steam it emits from its body and use it to burn and repel attacks, as well as create a mushroom cloud of dust and rubble, which has proven to be extremely lethal. So in summary, don't mess with the Colossal Titan. If you were like me, although you probably weren't, you would have been shocked at the moment Eren became the Attack Titan. The Attack Titan is known for its muscular physique as well as its height of 15 meters and fleshless jaw. The Attack Titan, as its name suggests, is built for just that, attacking. But one of the most unique aspects of the Attack Titan is the fact that not only does it retain memories from past users, it can basically transcend time and access memories of future users. That's why the Attack Titan has the future as well as the past in mind, although admittedly the picture of the future is often incomplete. Next on the list is the Armored Titan, and there is no guessing as to what this Titan is known for. 
Standing at around 15 meters, the armored titan is covered with thick, hardened plates that are able to act as a natural defense to external attacks such as steel blades, cannon hits, and vertical maneuvering equipment. What makes the armored titan even more formidable, though, is the fact that he can harden his hands and feet to make himself some wolverine-style claws in the process. The armored titan isn't completely invulnerable, though, with the back of its joints being exposed, and it still can't withstand high-power weapons such as artillery. When I first heard the Beast Titan talk, I think my jaw hit the floor, and there was something weirdly terrifying about that moment. The Beast Titan, which often takes traits from different animals, such as an ape in Zeke Jaeger's case, is also known for its immense size, influence over pure titans, and the ability to throw large objects, such as boulders, with Patrick Mahomes-style pinpoint accuracy. With Zeke as its user, the Beast Titan has been able to use its royal blood to turn subjects of Hemir into titans and use its spinal fluid to turn Falco into a titan. As well as the ape form we see, the Beast Titan has also been known to take characteristics from animals such as bulls, elk, wolves, and birds in the past. The ape form, though, is almost Machiavellian in its creepiness. Like Zeke's Beast Titan, the female Titan also has its ability to influence pure Titans with her scream-based ability. The female Titan can draw swarms of pure Titans to itself, although this has proven to have repercussions in the past, with the other Titans tending to attack and eat its body. The female Titan does have some really badass qualities, though, with the Titan able to harden its skin at will in order to shatter steel blades, have tremendous endurance, and even protect the user with a hardened crystal cocoon even when they come out of the Titan's neck. Again, there is no guessing as to what the Jaw Titan is known for. Like a hyena, the Jaw Titan has an extremely powerful set of jaws that can tear through almost anything with a scary amount of ease. Even wearing a great deal of armor won't protect you from that all too powerful and terrifying bite. However, the Jaw does manifest differently depending on the user. Ymir, for example, only developed hardened teeth, while Falco and Marcel developed hardened masks along with a jaw plating that would leave them basically bulletproof. If that wasn't enough, though, Falco's jaw titan even has the ability to sprout wings and a tail, meaning that it can transport people on its body through the air. Although, in terms of size, the jaw titan is one of the smallest, measuring at around 4 meters, although titan height does depend on their inheritors. While they may not be the most menacing or physically imposing titan, also often measuring at around 4 meters, cart titans also have a lot going for them. The cart titan is immensely quick, holds a great level of endurance and absorption resistance, meaning it can endure quite a lot, such as carrying around cargo, weapon platforms, and wear armor. What separates it from most titans, though, is that it often assumes a quadrupedal form instead of the typical bipedal titan form. However, their lower defenses and slower regenerative abilities do provide a weakness and make them much more susceptible to receiving a fatal blow. Next up, we have the Warhammer Titan, which has the ability to produce and manipulate structures that are made of hardened titan flesh. This means that the Warhammer Titan is able to weaponize these structures and turn them into different forms, such as spikes and blades with a serrated edge, just to give them, well, the edge. However, constantly using this power can be dangerous, as it can deplete the stamina of its user, so it is advised to use this ability in moderation. But one major difference between the Warhammer Titan and the rest of the Nine is the fact that it can remove its control center from the nape of its neck and instead bind the Titan and the user by a long cable of flesh, giving it an extra level of uniqueness that none of the other Titans have. And last but certainly not least, we have, of course, the Founding Titan. The Founding Titan, which is also known as the Progenitor Titan and the Coordinate, is the first of all of the Titans to have the ability to control and create others, as well as modify the memories and bodies of the subjects of Ymir. Historically, the Founding Titan can only be harnessed by members of the royal family, although this all changed when it came under the control of Eren. When it comes to power, the Founding Titan is pretty stacked, with it possessing the ability to create and control Titans, something Eren discovers rather unwittingly, as well as memory alterations and the ability to communicate telepathically. Surprisingly, though, it's not as big as you might think, often standing at around 13 meters, but it does have the capability to grow even bigger, assuming the user is able to harness its full abilities. 
So which is your favorite Titan? Mine has to be the Colossal Titan because that guy is terrifying, but in a cool way. Also, if I could grow 60 feet and could smash down gates with ease, I would head straight to Marvel to make sure they bring back Daredevil!